Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of Knights of the Old Republic. Now, you're not going to believe me, but <laughs> we may have done some kind of accidental save scumming. Um, here's, here's what I mean. Uh, oh, my headset's dying. Why who? Uh, I can't hear anything. Great. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> oh, man. Guess I'm going to have to get that charged before I start recording further. <laughs> Shit. All right. Uh, I'll be back, I guess. Give me just a moment. Now I'm back. Now the headset is uh, charged as much as it's probably going to get. And uh, I can explain further uh, what I was talking about. Um, so, <laughs> I was going to try and save uh, the location just in case the uh, episode didn't, you know, properly upload like I thought it would. Um, or rather, rather, properly save. Um, I do this from time to time just to make sure that the, uh, episode isn't completely corrupted. Um, that was a tactic I used in the past and it kept me from, uh, losing a lot of progress and having to explain a, oops, I don't know where it went sort of thing. Um, <laughs> I guess I didn't go to the right option and I selected load. For the last place I was at. So I had to do everything again. The only thing I hadn't done is talk to the uh, port official. So uh, here we are. <laughs> and everything has been basically reset to the way it was. It's just right now it didn't go through the way I hoped. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to do this all again. Welcome to Manak. While you are here, I trust you will follow all the rules governing the activities of offworlders. Uh, what are the rules exactly? The single most important law in Manan is have fun. No, I'm just kidding. Very simple. Culto smuggling is punishable by death. If you're carrying an un any unprocessed culto, you better have a permit. The other rule is also very simple. Keep the peace. Here on Manan, we maintain a careful neutrality, and we react very harshly to people who jeopardize our neutral status. Okay, fair enough. Any confrontations between the Sith and Republic are dealt with swiftly and decisively. This is understood. That's it? Only two laws? Don't be foolish, human. Of course we have laws against murder, theft, and other crimes, but these laws are hardly different than those of any other planet. Manan neutrality is closely linked to our culto production. That is why I made special mention of the laws regarding smuggling and keeping the peace. Fair enough, but how can you be neutral when the Sith are trying to conquer everything? The Sith respect the independence of Manan as much as the Republic does. As long as we continue to control the production of a resource as valuable as Kulto, we have no need to fear any conquering fleet. Should Manan ever come under attack, we would destroy the supply of Kulto and vanish beneath the oceans of our world. Even the Sith are not willing to risk the loss of a commodity as valuable as Kulto. That seems awfully short-sighted. Your opinion is biased by your own alliances, human. Only we Selkath can best protect the interests of Manan and Ato City. There is a docking fee of 100 credits. You will have to pay this fee each time you dock on Manan, or you will not be permitted into Ato City. Okay, here's where I try this again. Um, eh, make it 50 credits and you got a deal. Fuck. The amount of the fee is legislated by the Manan Board of Trade and Tourism. I am not at liberty to haggle on this matter. <sighs> Fine. Here's the docking fee. The Manan Board of Trade and Tourism thanks you, Offworlder. Here's a visitor guide and map to the city. Refer to it should you have any questions. 
The gates of Otto City are now open to you. You may come and go as you please, so long as you do not leave the planet. If you do, you will have to pay the docking fee once more. Fair enough. Okay. Well, in that case, I guess we're out of here. Even though he has joined your group, Jolie remains somewhat mysterious character. Maybe you should speak with him about why he chose to come with you. Okay. Uh, got something on your mind? Why did you decide to come with me? You got yourself a fast little ship. <laughs> I forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashik is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. So you wanted a ride on my ship? Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of a synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta check something real quick. Um, that seems like it should have been earlier if they're talking about the ship. Give me a second. I need to figure something out. I'll be right back. Okay, it was just a fluke. It was... Technically, I could have done it on the ship, but it prompts me to do it if I'm not on the ship. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if you don't want to answer the question, old man, just say so. How impatient can one person be? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Your mother mad. All that gurgling and fussing. <laughs> Babies are cute, but annoying. Okay. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. Okay, are you saying my breath is like a bantha? A bantha? Are you sure? You want to go down this road? Is that is this a comment on my? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that was my my gist of it. Uh, did you annoy this person endlessly too? Oh, 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 very funny. Is it my fault that some people are so easily annoyed? Yes. Like impatient little children with blasters. Anyway, uh, where was I? I have a lightsaber oh, yes. though. And or Vex was his name. The okay. Force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. Really? I never heard of him. No, you wouldn't have. Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedi's excited at our age, so we go, ooh, destiny. <laughs> well, it turned out that okay. Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. Oh. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. Is there supposed to be some hidden meaning in this? I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Eh. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Okay. Oh yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. <laughs> it's boring as a story. How young are we talking? Well... Let's just say that I was a strapping young lad with a full head of hair, and Coruscant was a small town with a well. <laughs> okay. I was just that old. All right. Fair Andor enough. To whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've huh. probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Krat has us hauled hmm. onto the bridge of his ship for questioning. And that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. How did you know? Swirling force, remember? Jedi here. Okay. Granted, I was just interpreting the signs, but we get trained in that sort of thing, more or less. Well, what do you Andor mean, more or less? His destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Krat okay. He's had enough and begins so dumbass, gotcha. Neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed too. Or this could have just been gurgling noises. Well, well, anyway. Finally, okay. Krat has enough of Andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something. <laughs> okay. On the way down, or just Why are you laughing at that? The reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. <laughs> so, 
So his great fucking destiny was getting thrown into an energy <laughs> intake and <laughs> sets off the reactor core to explode the ship. And that was his great destiny. And then, I mean, I can understand why you're laughing at that now, but <laughs> that's really all it was. You're kidding. Everyone panics and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? I... I guess, but how can you even be sure Andor was responsible? What? Are you kidding? What are the odds of that happening anyway? A billion to one? You should do so well as to be sucked into the engine of some evil Sith Lord, you know. Um, Andor was a hero. Sort of. Anyway, go What do you mean, sort of? Dry and you're making me cranky. I mean, Shoo. he didn't get to survive being a hero, but I mean, yeah, I guess he was a hero, sure. All right, I guess. Um, well, that's uh, that's fairly interesting, I'd say. All right, okay. So, we'll continue onward, I guess. Sith soldiers, shit like that. No one... No one particularly eye-catching over here. At least not that I can see. About here. East Central Courtyard. Well. I'm going to explore the rest of this area first. Because I don't know what's in here. I'll find out something. I'm sure. Probably. Ooh. Colto Distribution Center. Okay. A uh, bunch of Selkath and soldiers for the Republic and Sith coordinator. I cannot sell you Colto unless you show me your purchase permit. I just want some information. I'm not here to answer your questions, Offworlder. I am a distributor distributor of Colto, the lifeblood of the Manan economy. Either show me your purchase permit or leave me in peace. Uh, I'll be going then. Good, I'm far too busy to convene with the likes of you. Converse with the likes of you. Still. Wow. Rude. Bitch. Alright. Get out of here then. And what's over here, I wonder? Another path to the west courtyard. Hmm. So I can go to the east or the west. I kind of want to explore the east, because I think the west is a critical path. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We'll find out. We'll find out if I'm wrong or not. Oh boy. That can't be good. Save your empty threats, Sith scum. Malik isn't stupid enough to attack the core worlds. Now with the entire Republic fleet waiting for him. You're a fool. When the Sith descend on Coruscant, our numbers will block out the sun itself. The galactic senators will collapse trembling in fear and beg for mercy at Malak's feet. Okay. You underestimate the Republic's resolve. We'll die before we surrender Coruscant. That can be arranged. Remember what happened to Taris. Malak could do the same to the core worlds. He wouldn't dare. Now it is you who underestimate our resolve. Well. So that's the sort of shit talking that goes on around here between those two. Huh. Makes sense that, uh. That shit would just get on each other's nerves. Yeah. Talk shit what to these guys. Another Republic lackey wandering the streets. Don't worry, the Sith will destroy you along with all the rest who don't bow down before Malak. Okay. 
I have no... Oh. That is... Probably dark sidey, but something I want to say. <laughs> I have no wish to trade childish taunts and empty words with you. I have nothing more to say to you. I have important Sith business to attend to. Uh huh. Right. General store. Hmm. How much for all this stuff, Tybark? Gee, we, I thought, uh, for the oh, Sith, a month's uh, pay. But since uh, you are a member of the Republic, uh, I will charge uh, you a week's uh, salary. Uh, That's nice. Thanks, Tybark. Catch you next week. Sounds good to me. You you don't seem to be leaving though, but Divark. The Selkath now seem more distant than before. They treat members of the Republic at arm's length only. I hope this does not negatively impact our trade. If they give too much deference to the Sith, then the monsters will simply come in and take over. But my feelings about the Sith are well known around Ato City. I shall spare you further outbursts. What may I do for you? See what you have. As you wish, human. My inventory contains the finest Aratech equipment you can find on Manan. All of it far superior to the Zerker Corpse will the Sith are so fond of. Nice to hear. Good to hear. What we got? Double blade, viper sword, Bothan Needler. For serious espionage, this is the weapon of choice. Simple ownership can get you arrested in some sim some systems. I can't talk. Or invited to dine with royalty, depending on what you what it helps you learn. Alrighty then. Arcanian pistols. Well, those are actually pretty good. Arcanian designs of this kind predated mass acceptance of heavier pistols, but 2,000 years later, they are still superior performers. Fair enough. This is a versatile blaster variant, possibly of ancient Arcanian origin. The Arcanians are very proud that such early efforts continue to be prized among collectors and soldiers. Mandalorian blaster, which is only slightly weaker than... The uh, Arcanian one. Hmm. Mandalorian Blaster is a slightly more powerful version of the basic blaster pistol. Hmm. The Elzebrak Battle Cannon? What? <laughs> it's a hell of a name. These weapons are almost beginning to cross the line to light artillery. <laughs> Jesus. Armor is generally ineffective against such a weapon unless it is of the highest quality. Well, I can definitely tell by the damage threshold. Jesus, that is massive. Repeating blaster, blaster carbine. Hmm. Combat sensor. Ooh. Targeting software inherent in this visor uses predictive algorithms to direct the wearer's gaze, allowing them to function more efficiently in combat. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, stabilizer mask. Oh, this is basically dealing with mind-affecting stuff instead of uh, poison with this. Advanced oral amplifier. Helps deal with awareness. In a fine balancing act, this unit amplifies the faint sounds of moving creatures while filtering out louder background noise that might otherwise deafen the user. Hmm. Interesting. And that is far stronger than the basic one. Neural band. Strength gauntlets. I already have a stronger version of that. Bmon package. It's an implant level 3 and a constitution plus 3. Bmon's top of the line package usurps the body's natural reactions to stress and damage, allowing the user to withstand greater amounts of punishment and exertion than normally possible. Interesting. That is definitely something pretty cool. All right. Um, now I think about it, though, I don't 
really have anyone who's up to implant level three. Or do I? Um, am I at that point? I don't know. Whoops. That wasn't what I meant to do. I meant to go to feats. Um, because I know I was sentinel. I'm at, I'm at level two. Okay. And scouts get this feat for, feat for free at fourth level. And the other one is free at, I'm assuming, oh wait, no, no, I'm, I'm now a Jedi. So that isn't, it isn't possible to get further than that without spending a, f a feat point. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Still. That that level is probably not not necessary. That level of constitution, among other things. Selkath, they're just probably talking to each other. Uh, what is this? A door to what? Something. East courtyard. Auto East. So, even further East. Okay. Alright. Where am I already? East Central. Okay. So, I'm in East Central. Where I was was West Central. Alright, fair enough. Can I talk to the Republic soldiers? I have to step to the Sith. They make me want to break so many laws just to pound the smirk out of their faces. <laughs> That's fair. Understandable. Hulas. Shady Rodian. Why do you bother me, human? I do not wish to speak to you. Why are you just standing here in a corner? I am here for my own reasons. Those who know of me and wish to do business know I can be found here. You will either do business with me or leave. Business. I trade and sell Pazak cards to, for those who have interest. If you have interest, then we can do business. Otherwise, leave. Okay. I'll leave. I think... Wait. Um. There was a thing. A Twi'lek named Senivec has given you a data pad he claims you dropped. On the data pad is a cryptic message. That was the name I thought I saw. Come alone or not at all. All right. You two go back to the ship for now. A human? There are Selkath everywhere, but you choose to speak with me. Am I so different? Do you think I have answers that others do not? Uh, that's a rather strange greeting. These are strange times. The Sith and the Republic battle for control of the galaxy, but their war destroys what they both seek to possess. The war sows fear and confusion. People are lost. They want guidance, direction. They have questions, and they want answers. That's why I'm here. I, too, seek answers. Answers to what? The Republic, the Sith, the war, everything, nothing. Answers are always hardest to find when the questions are unclear. Yet that does not stop us from searching. Who are you? A name? There is power in names. Yet in the end, a name alone means no less than nothing. I'm Hulas, a traveler from the world of Duro. And what is your name, human? My name is Farron Khan. Farron Khan. Now we know something about each other. But really, we still know nothing. What do you want with me, human? I was given a message to see you by Seni Vec. Seni did not think you would come, but I knew better, Baron Khan. It is good that you have come alone, for if you ever come with others, I will not speak to you of these things. I am Hulas of the Geno Haradan. Geno Haradan. A secret society of bounty hunters. For a thousand generations we have existed, but always hidden beneath an impenetrable veil. I've never heard of you. There's probably a reason for that. 
but okay, we'll go with that. Few ever have. We are shadow, darkness, and night. We are less than a whisper or a thought. We have managed to keep our existence a secret far longer than most could have ever imagine. If you are ever foolish enough to tell anyone about this meeting or the Jino Haradan's existence, man, my name is a mouthful, they will not believe you. They would probably think you were paranoid or mentally unstable. Not even those closest to you can know we have approached you. If you ever speak to me around any of your companions, I will not discuss the Jino Haradan. Do you understand, Farin Khan? I understand. I believe you speak the truth, Farin Khan. But remember this, if you ever betray us, this opportunity will be lost forever. Few among the galaxy have ever heard of the Jina Harada. They never see us, never know we are there. We do not, they do not even know we exist. If you do not follow our rules, we will vanish and you will be like all the others. You will never see us again. We will be nothing but a figment of your imagination. But if you swear to keep the secrets of our order, you will learn of a forbidden society known only to a handful throughout the galaxy. I will prefer, I will preserve the secrecy of your order. Excellent, Farin Khan. We have high hopes for you within the guild, if you prove yourself worthy. Listen closely, and we will, I will give you the first glimpse into our secret world. We Jina Haradin are an ancient guild of elite bounty hunters. For thousands of years we have been at work throughout the galaxy, eliminating our targets in near total secrecy. Uh, I mean... Yeah, there's a little bit of a plot hole there. How do you get contracts if you don't get known by anyone? In the highest corridors of power, a handful of people know we exist and how to contact us. Of course, these people are smart enough to keep this knowledge a carefully guarded secret. Fair enough. And on very rare occasions, when we are seeking new clients, one of our guild masters will approach a powerful political figure and offer our services when the time is ripe. What does this have to do with me? By killing Kalo Nord, you have shown that a, you have great potential. Gina Haradin could use someone like you, if you are willing, and your work for us could be of great aid to the Republic. Why would the Gina Haradin protect the Republic? The Gino Haradin have a vested interest in preserving the Republic. It is the perfect cover for our work. We operate behind the scenes, manipulating events through subtle machinations. Do you think the Republic has persisted for 15,000 years by mere accident? If not for our influence, distasteful as our methods may be to some, the Republic would have collapsed long ago. We understand the bureaucracy of the Republic. We have learned how to alter the course of political events under the existing regime. We have no wish to see the Republic fall. Why would I want to join? As I said earlier, your efforts here will help the Republic, and by aiding us, you will earn the right to join an exclusive organization with the power to alter the very course of galactic history. And, of course, there is the simplest reason of all. The Gino Haradin reward their agents very, very well. What do I have to do to join, then? I mean, fuck. Might as well. As you can imagine, joining the Gino Haradin is not a simple process. To begin, you will need proof of your loyalty and your competence. When you feel you are ready, I will give you a task. A target who must be eliminated. Of course, you will have to come alone whenever you wish to discuss Gina Haradin business. I'm ready to prove myself, then. Killing Kalo Nord was an impressive display of your skills, but there is more to the Gina Haradin than mere killing. To preserve the secrecy of our order, our agents must be discreet. You must be able to find and eliminate a target without drawing undue attention. You can never mention your assignments to others, not even your closest allies. Also, you cannot ask people for information about your target. You must complete your mission using only the information I will provide. What happens if I tell someone? They wouldn't believe you. They might even think you are insane. Telling anyone about the Gina Haradin would be pointless. We are very good at hiding any proof of our existence. Fair enough. Okay. So, if I run my mouth, everyone will think I'm a wackadoodle, cuckoo bonkers crazy. 
if I just do the tasks in front of me, presumably with no outside help, then uh, we're all good. And I'm a good member of the order, I guess. Okay. I understand who is my target. We will begin with something simple. Your first mission is to eliminate either of the two targets. A grand slaver named Sulan Centaur or a Rodian anti-republic terrorist named Lorgal. Tell me about Lorgal. Lorgal is a radical who wants to destroy the Republic through terrorist acts. He is responsible for over two dozen bombings, leaving hundreds of civilians dead. Jesus. He was recently captured and is being held prisoner in the Republic base here on Manan, awaiting transport for, to Coruscant for trial and a chance to publicly voice his radical beliefs. We do not want to give him that chance. You must find a way to kill him before he leaves for Coruscant. But you must be subtle. It must look like an accident or an unexplainable death. The Republic would be glad to get rid of Lorgal, so they won't investigate his death closely. As long as he isn't struck down by a weapon in his cell, the Dina Haradan will be satisfied. So, make it look like an accident. Or some goofy, crazy way that he could have just somehow offed himself. Make it look like that. Okay. It's starting to get some uh, reality vibes out of that one. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Zulan Centaur. Zulan was a common intergalactic slaver who tried to kidnap the daughter of a Coruscant senator. Holy shit. He failed, and the girl was recovered. But Zulan himself escaped. He will probably try another similar kidnapping soon. If he succeeds, he might ransom his victim in exchange for dangerous political secrets that could threaten the Republic itself. The Gino Haradan want to eliminate him before this happens. Our latest information places Ulan on Dantooine. He often sells illicit goods to the wealthy settlers of that world. His land speeder was spotted near one of the settlers' estates on Dantooine. Zulan rarely strays far from his speeder in case he needs to make a quick escape. You should look for him there. Wait. I know which guy he's talking about. It was by the, uh, the, the, the robot lady. The one who was fucking her robot. Yeah, no, I remember that now. Oh, wow, okay. So, uh, some of these will be targets that we have interacted with in the past. Okay. Fair enough. I'll deal with the one that's here, and then I'll go after Zulan after. Is there anything else? Remember, tell no one about this. If there are others with you when you confront Zulan or Lorgal, and make it seem as if you are acting on behalf of the Republic, not the Gina Haradan. This is all for now. Return to me when either Lorgal or Zulan is dead, and I will reward you. If you wish to complete both missions, feel free. You will be suitably rewarded for each. Okay. Interesting. Interesting indeed. I'm gonna run solo for a little while. Just to, uh... Find where that one guy is. Republic Embassy, huh? Huh. Republic security clearance is required to enter. Alright, well, I can't do that right now. Even though I'm pretty sure he's in there. A door. Another door. Visitor's Hotel. Ignis. Sorry, buddy, but the hotel is closed. Ever since the murder, the Selkath have made me keep this place locked up tight. Only the Selkath authorities and those authorized by them are allowed in. What murder? This old Republic war hero by the name of Sunri was seeing this Sith woman here, Alasa. Well, okay. they were seeing each other, but the other night a blaster went off in one of the rooms. Sunri got seen leaving the place, and the Sith woman was dead on the floor. But not everyone oh. thinks this Sunri did it. So the Selkath are holding him in prison, while the case gets sorted out. In the meantime, they closed down my hotel. But enough well, that about my problems. You can't stay here while the investigation is on. You'll have to find someplace else to stay. Sorry. Well! Okay! 
I kind of accidentally stumbled upon, uh, I'm sure to be quest. Oops. <laughs> well then, in that case. I kind of want to keep moving. Let's go over to uh, the east side. Moving on up to the east side. All right. I wonder what is over here. Cleaning droid, okay. Hmm. Hey, this street is for Sith only. You gotta pay a 20 credit toll to walk down this street. This is a public street. Hiding behind the Selkath laws. Typical Republic cowardice. Aha. Uh -huh. You say that when there's a group of Selkath right next to you. Fucking dumb little shit. Uh, okay, there's Travelers and Selkath. They aren't named, though, so they aren't interesting enough for moi. Uh, door. Yortal's Emporium. Interesting. You got any armor plating for my spook bike? Yes, I have a fine piece right here. A little dented, but still serviceable. And a real bargain at that price. Oh, I thought this garbage was free. You actually sell this junk. You fish are a strange breed. Get out of my store. I'm sick of you Sith and your stupid jokes. I've got real customers to worry about. I don't need you coming in here and making fun of my inventory every day. Don't worry, junk man. When I want garbage, I'll be back. Jesus. You fucking prick. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're tall. How's it going? Are you here to mock me as a Sith, or do you actually want to buy something? Uh, I'm not here to make fun of you. I'm fair and calm. Please forgive me. I have no cause to be so rude to you. The Sith make such trouble for me, and the business has been slow. But that is no excuse for my tone. I apologize. Please, let me... Let us start off on the right foot. Welcome to the used goods store of Yortal Ixlis. Well, that's a hell of a name. If there is anything I can help you with, all you need to do is ask. Uh, let's ask you some questions. I fear I will be of little help in providing information, human. I spend most of my time here in my shop or out collecting inventory. And at night, I am too exhausted to do anything but return home and sleep in preparation for the next day. I know that feel. I will do my best to answer your questions, but I cannot promise to be of much help. That's fair. How did you come to run a junk pile or used good shop? Ah, yes, that. Well, I was not always in such dire straits. In fact, once I would have been quite well off, but the Sith had other plans. Well, technically my debt is to the Zerker Corporation, but that amounts to the same thing in the end. How did you get in debt? I was quite a hand at electrical and mechanical devices of all sorts. I traveled the galaxy, working for hire among all sorts of beings. But one day I failed in a task for a Zerka Corporation executive and was forced into debt. I need money to pay them off, but I cannot find work anywhere the Zerka Corporation has influence. So they put me here, fixing scraps and selling them for little profit. In time, in years, I may be able to repair my debt, but for now I must work. Is there anything else I may help you with? Uh, I'd like to look at your inventory. Of course, human. My stock is all second-hand, and some of it has minor damage. But with the repairs I have done to them, my items are as good as new, for a fraction of the price. Well, that's always nice. Heavy plating type 3. That would be good for... Huh. That would be pretty good for one of them. Out of the two. But I don't know which one. Well, I mean, HK is an assassin droid. He's the most combat capable of the two. I guess it would be better for him. 
But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, T3 is far more useful of a droid. And if we can't keep him uh, well off in the combat department, we might as well have him be pretty armored up. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, I want it. All right. Verpine Demolitions Probe. Okay, advanced targeting computer. Basic targeting computer. Uh, I don't think I have need for any of these upgrades. At least I don't think so? Um, I'm going to bring them in and make sure of that thought process. Um, equipment. There we go. Oh, I could equip him with more stuff. Oh, I don't have anything equipped on him. Jesus. Motion sensors type 1. That's fair. Oh, I can't even put that on him yet. Well, that sucks. Uh, medium plating type 3. I can't put it on any of them yet. Jesus. Okay, well, I have it set just in case. Okay. Um, his health is actually rather low. And his defense is already quite high. Okay. Oh, jeez. Alright, alright, okay. Let's uh, look at your inventory. Um, let's sell that one that I don't need. I don't forget. I don't remember having that many Dark Jedi Knight robes, but okay. And I don't remember having Davik's War Suit still in my possession. I didn't think I was holding on to it for that long. Alright, well, we'll get rid of this at least. Combat suit is kind of worthless. Um... Kalo, Kalo Nord's battle armor. I'll hold on to that for a little while, I guess. Um, get rid of this military suit. Mandalorian battle armor. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay. Sell these two Viper swords because I don't need them. Man, I have so many things that I don't need. What the fuck? Why am I holding on to so many things? Jesus. Alright, let's sell that. Um, Mandalorian Ripper. I'll get rid of one of those. There we go. Because they're not going to be much help otherwise. Um, blessed Rifle. I have a lot of bowcasters. Jesus. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of one of those. Zalbar's bowcaster. Have I not? I'm kind of curious between the two of them. Zalbar's is not particularly upgradable. Uh, so this one's already... This one's already upgraded pretty high up and is significantly stronger than uh, Zalbar's. Okay, fair enough. Interesting. Um, let's keep scrolling down. Wow, I have way too much shit. <laughs> Jesus. All right, all right, okay. Um, Durasteel Bonding Alloy. Okay. Get rid of this. Um, don't really need this anymore. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I mean, this would be an upgrade uh, for. This would be an upgrade for uh, da -da 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 HK. Sure, let's do that. And get the type two. It's a minor upgrade, but an upgrade. Yes. Alright. Okay, let's go through this again. Okay. 
um, sell that again. Jesus, I have so much crap. Why do I hold on to so much crap? Why am I that dumb? Uh, there we go. Sell that. And we're good for now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. And actually, I think we're a little over time on uh, the episode stuff. So, um, yeah. For now, I'm just going to end the episode. And uh, we will get to more exploring of Manan in a little bit. And uh, maybe at that point we'll do more of the mission stuff? Maybe? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find out. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next video. This has been the one and only Stray Cat playing games and exploring Manan a little bit and finding out that the Gino Haradin are a thing that are apparently on the side of the Republic just need to be doing some shady shit from the sound of it uh, but uh, hey if it helps the Republic I guess we can do it on top of the fact that uh, we're just gonna be exploring for now and seeing what new shit I can pull up and uh, upgrade I guess because why not for you